You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's January 29th, 2021. Well, there was a book written a couple hundred years ago called Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds. And if you don't think that we're herd animals and that we don't just go over the cliff like lemmings, you need to read that book and you need to watch what's happening on Wall Street now. The GameStop boys, now they think that it's the good guys against the bad guys. They're basically the Redditors are taking on the shorts from Wall Street and they're winning. Well, things are never that simple. And that's why we're going to check in with Dr. John Huber. And you can find more about him at tripsitter.clinic. And Dr. Huber, great to have you back on as always. So we see this rush. Uh, My friend Nick Santiago, master trader, called it the uh, dash for trash. And it seems like the gullibility of the masses, of the mass investors on Wall Street, it seems like they'll fall for anything these days. Well, it's a prime example of how people are so manipulated and controlled by media, social media in particular. And they they think because, you know, 10 other people are saying this, wait, I got to get in on this. And it's really bizarre. I mean, you know, one of the things that when I've Decades ago, when I started looking at stocks and everything else, the people, the books I read, the people I talked to, they said, always look at the fundamentals and know what you're, you know, looking for. You know, if you're, if you're day trading, you want to look for volatility. You want to see movement all the time. You know, if you, if you are looking for the long haul, if you're looking to, to really establish and and create a, a good portfolio, you need to stick with with fundamentals. What is basically, you know, going to keep this company alive for the next 20 years, next hundred years. And GameStop's fundamentals are horrid. And we know what's going on. Everything is shifting to online. Uh, you know, if 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 the current COVID crisis isn't enough to, to show people that, but they're looking at this whole mass movement and people don't want to not be part of the in crowd. And it, it's it's a pretty manipulating thing. You know, a few people, a few market traders, you know, go on to, to sites like Reddit where it's not very well regulated and they start saying, oh my gosh, look at this. You know, GameStop is is climbing and it's it's you know right on the precipice. Well it's right on the precipice for chapter 13. But <laughs> they they, they don't tell you that part. Or right. <laughs> yeah. Or seven, eleven, yeah. yeah. Seven, and, eleven. And so they start talking about, oh look at it, it's gonna move. And so people start buying in and all of a sudden the stock that's that's being depressed because of natural fundamental errors in its 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 uh, whole business marketing plan, you know, all of a sudden people are buying in on it thinking it's a discount and they see it run up, run up, run up. And the people who plan those notions that this is this is the way to go, they know that ultimately reality is going to stick in. Is it going to hit next week? Is it going to hit three months from now? Is it going to hit 12 months from now? Man, if you're an options player, buy your 24-month puts out there on that mm-hmm. thing because you know it's going to crash. It's just a matter of time because the fundamentals cannot support it. The shops are closing because nobody's buying there anymore. You can buy the games online. You don't need a disc anymore. It's pretty bizarre, and people aren't seeing this. You know, and a lot of times it's a better thing for you because you don't have to upload all this, all the software and use up all your data, you know, hard drive space for this game when you can just use it online, you know, just kind of like, kind of like Microsoft did with, with its whole office suite, you know, everything's online, you know, QuickBooks has that option, all these different things. The games are doing it now. It makes a lot of sense. The game companies then can keep control of the software. They can keep people from hacking stuff. They can get in there and they can update, put new security things on there, not really disrupt much 
the gameplay. It, it's a smart move. And GameStop is going way of blockbuster. And people aren't seeing that because they're riding that mass hysteria. It's groupthink at its worst. And we've seen that for the last 15, 16 years on social media, how people have stopped thinking for themselves stop getting the groundwork necessary to stand up and say, okay, no, wait a minute. I know better. This is not what's going on because it's really easy to be part of the herd. And that way, if it fails, you're not the only one. So it's like, you, you know, misery loves company kind of thing. But the reality of it is you're talking about a lot of times people's retirements are, are involved in this. You don't need to be following groupthink when this is going on. You need to do your research, do your due diligence. We hear it all the time in the investment world. Do your due diligence, do your homework, study, see what's happening in that marketplace. Is this really <laughs> the, the, the outlook for the future? And unfortunately, all the fundamentals are there that this thing is not going to be here in 12 to 24 months. And, and why would we be running this stock up when you know it's going the other way. And if you start seeing, look what's happening behind, there's a lot of, you know, shorting going on because the people who <laughs> are in the know are going to capitalize off of it. And the ones who've done their due diligence, the ones who practiced and, and, and have watched the market and they understand these ebbs and flows, you know, just because it's out there on social media and you get this investment, you know, oh, we meant to send this. To you. Sorry, we didn't mean to give you this email, but look <laughs> what's going on. Anyhow, man, those are all group think processing. And then they throw you know, some bots out there that post on Reddit for 24 hours. And it may have cost somebody, you know, a couple thousand dollars, two, three thousand dollars to to pay somebody to type in and run these bots for, for two days. But, you know, that looks like there's real humans there and they're buying and investing and look what's going on. And so people jump, jump on the boat. They don't want to be left behind. But unfortunately, it is part of this mass media hysteria. And, and they've learned the people in the news media, the people who are shady in the investing areas, like what we're talking about now, realize this. And it's a it's a psychological thing. You want to be part of the team. You want to be part and belong to something. And you see this running up and you hear all this positive talk. It's a You think this is an easy way to do things. Well, if it's easy, it's not worth your time. That's the thing. You know, we have to realize that, you know, if it was easy, everybody would be a billionaire and it's not. All right. So we got this thing called FOMO, fear of missing out. The Absolutely. fear that you uh, all your friends are going to get rich all around you and you're going to be left out. And that seems to be human nature. It's a strong impulse. Uh, how do we know when we're becoming a victim of FOMO? <laughs> Well, what you got to think about is the lottery, for example. We just had uh, a nationwide lottery that hit basically uh, oh, yeah. the first time at a billion dollars. And it was funny because I walked into one of the offices I do consulting with and everybody's sitting there going, hey, you want to join our thing? And I'm like, uh, OK, you know, the odds of actually winning, even if we bought like 2000 tickets are so slim that it, it's it's and they go, oh, it's only three dollars and we're just doing it for the heck of it. You know, that's not. That's not FOMO. That's not throwing away life. That's okay. I'm not going to buy a Starbucks coffee today, you know, and, and you're kind of doing it for, uh, giggles, you know, you just, what if it happens, whatever, you know, because there's part of you that says, Hey, you know, if everybody in this office go wins this billion dollars, they're not working here tomorrow. And then I don't have a job. So I need to kind of be in, you know, that fear of missing out. But it's not, you know, $3 is not going to crush me. You know, it, it's not going to keep me from making my car payment. And what you got to look at is if this deal goes south, what are you going to be left with? Mm. And if your rationale says, oh, well, I'm going to pull this out of my 401k and there's 20,000 I'm putting in here. That's a bad mistake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. that is when life changing you, could be FOMO control you versus, Hey, I'm going to skip out. And in fact, when, when, when I was younger, we used to play the lottery all the time. And what I did is I, I drank too many sodas. So mm -hmm. every time I'd be driving down the road and I go, Oh man, I want a soda. And I'm like, no, you should no, you should. And I pull into a, a quickie Mart 
I would buy a lottery ticket instead of that soda. Costs about the same, and I'm not putting all these empty calories into my body. <laughs> you know, and and it it we just did it. You know, it was a way of me kind of controlling my behavior, and I didn't I I got more out of it throwing that two dollars or dollar away on a lottery ticket than I did in putting all those bad chemicals in my body. And, you know, lo and behold, at one point, my wife and I got five out of six numbers and it actually paid our bills for the next three months. And it was just it was just sheer dumb luck, you know, but it's not that that's not how you make your living. You know, that. so watch watch out for these things that say, hey, bring your bring your retirement over here. Don't bring it all. You know, we don't want you to just bring half of it. You know, because this is going to this is going to change your life. Well, it's going to change your life because you're going to lose the money you put into that because the fundamentals aren't there. They're no better than the lottery at this point. If it if if GameStop is here five years from now, statistically, it's because it won the lottery somehow, (laughs) some way it pulled itself out of the blockbuster sinkhole. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's really fun to watch, I have to say. And, you know, there's the demise of people. Carrie, come on. (laughs) Not the demise of people, but the demise of this company that becomes this vehicle for uh, mass gambling and speculation. One thing one thing you learn from this is the SEC doesn't care about you. The Department of Justice doesn't care because what's happening to that stock certainly isn't legal. And yet uh, the the government who you think is there to protect you is standing idly by while you lose potentially a fortune. Well, you know, they have a lot to gain from these shareholders or these people who are shorting this who are going to make a lot of profit. They're, they're gaining on the profits that are made right now as it's running up, you know, people's portfolios. And so they're having to pay these tax penalties and stuff, especially if they're, hey, let's get out of this now, you know, and they it's it's bizarre you know there there's actually a lot to to gain from for the government and for these controlling ent- entities but they're going to go back and tell you what i just said well did you not look at the fundamentals did you not know what you were investing in you know it says everywhere don't go into this blind do your due diligence it says on all your trading forms do your due diligence this is not for people who don't know what they're doing but people do it and they don't know what they're doing because FOMO, fear of missing out. They don't want to be left behind when all their other friends are having these amazing, you know, Hey, go back and look at, at Dell stock. Okay. Uh, look at, here's one that I remember. And in fact, I, I still am in touch with my high school biology teacher way back in the early eighties. He said, buy Janine tech. It's only 27 cents a share. And I'm like, why would you do that? He goes, you know, if you have a hundred dollars, you're, you're working at a, at a, a clothing store, take a hundred dollars and buy this because they are on the lead of this genetic revolution. And what happened? Gene tech actually found and mapped the whole human genome and their stock. I remember 82 being 25 cents a share. If I'd have bought a hundred share, hundred dollars worth of that right now, I would, I would be a hundred millionaire at this point because it's split so many times. And he was, he was right. He was completely and utterly right. And, you know, he's living a happy retirement. He put some money in on it and he didn't have to worry right now. And, you know, he didn't put his whole life savings into it. He didn't put his retirement into it, you know, but what did he do? He took what he knew, his science, his science background, his education in science. And then he went and he started looking at science companies, new ones that are just starting out that have, you know, their fingers into great ideas. And if he sat there and looked at it kind of like a lottery thing, okay, these are great ideas and we have scientists running them. If they have good business support, if they have people who know how to start businesses, this can be an amazing thing if their science is even half right. Well, what happened was their science was completely right, and they did have good business people behind them, but not everything he invested in did. So he puts a hundred here, a hundred there, a hundred here, and yeah, he doesn't he doesn't eat a lot of you know Dairy Queen snacks or <laughs> or go out to eat all the time, you know. Yeah. But he's not he's not taking his retirement and taking here. Let's take ten thousand out of here and dump into this. I mean, go back and yeah. think if he had a hundred dollars when Coca Cola went public. 
and bought a hundred dollars worth of stock, you know, your family would be, you know, in the world's wealthiest right now. I mean, since about 1907, you know, and today, so just reinvest those dividends, right? Absolutely. (laughs) It's not, you know, you don't want to hit a home run. You want to get on base and be playing. And you do that consistently. You end up in the hall of fame. Mm-hmm. That's all there is to well, it. Uh, my sister bought a hundred shares of Apple. I don't remember how many years ago it was 15, 20 years ago when it was wow. really at its bottom for $8 a share. Oh and, my goodness. And that uh, turned into several hundred thousand dollars when she finally sold it off. She probably shouldn't have, but she wanted the cash to do some stuff with. And that's just one example where, you know, you don't have to spend a lot. You just have to make the right bet. And if you do it in enough places, it's going to turn out good. But when you see like the stock market being as overvalued as it is now and real estate, kind of uh, alarm bells should be going off. But but the media has programmed us to ignore the alarm bells, whether it's eating too much food, whether it's eating the wrong food, buying stocks, investing at the wrong time, buying real estate at the wrong time. The media has counteracted our normal warning signs that would uh, would automatically shift into gear, you know, fight or flight. They've figured out how to deprogram our sense of survival here. Don't just survive. Thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Gold Terra Resource Corp. is a gold exploration company that has assembled a highly prospective district-scale land position on the doorstep of the city of Yellowknife in Canada's Northwest Territories. Gold Terra is currently focused on expanding and delineating gold resources at the company's Yellowknife City Gold Project with the goal of discovering over 5 million ounces. With ready access to infrastructure and multiple high-grade gold discoveries, Gold Terra is on track to re-establishing Yellowknife as one of the premier gold mining districts in Canada. Gold Terra trades as YGT in Toronto and YGTFF on the OTC. For more information, go to goldterracorp.com. That's goldterracorp.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. You know, and that's exactly, that's exactly right. And, and it, it makes us need to really go back and and what do you know that's what you should be working like my biology professor you know is a good friend of mine today you know he knew what he knew he knew he didn't know about computer technology so he focused on the biology and what's out there that way so if you've got training and experience for example in real estate what do you know is going on right now there is going to be a correction there's too much of this stuff going on i mean i was on i was on um a Newsmax show talking about the economy in January of last year. And before we even knew about COVID and they were talking about how, you know, the, the market may be overvalued. And I go, look, the way this is going before December 31st, we're going to hit 30,000 in the market. And it's because of that FOMO, the, the mental uh, inability for people to not try to jump on the bus, you know, because what if I miss out? And they'll they'll feed this fury and the people who know what they know, they specialize in different areas uh, in the markets, whether it's science or technology or or housing. They're going to know and they're going to they're going to position themselves to capitalize off of that. And of course, even with covid, we hit 30,000. And it was funny because they were like, well, are you serious? I go, look, it's going to happen. It's it's a mental state. It's not a financial state that's driving this. And we need to be cautious in these times. Absolutely. You know, look at the fundamentals. Very true. Hey, so, you know, I've got this thing, uh, I think it's called the pandemic induced depression. Absolutely. And so many of you out there are really depressed. Now, look, I told you from the get go, I wasn't worrying about it. I figured I had a one in a 100 chance of dying if I got COVID. I got it a year later. I beat it. But I have a good friend who became a complete or near complete recluse over the past year because she didn't want to get COVID. She got it four days after I got it from her brother. And <laughs> and she's had a totally miserable year. I had one of the best years of my life the past year. Everything just was working great. And, you know, yeah, I got COVID. I managed to beat it. I was taking precautions with supplements, vitamin D, zinc, et cetera. But point is 
that you could easily get it anyway, even if you're hiding under your bed in your house. So a lot of people are doing that. They're not going out. They're not socializing. They're getting really depressed. Well, and there, there's there's a large portion of COVID victims that never get COVID, but they the, the suicide numbers are through the roof. The suicide hotlines, you know, uh, finally, I believe the suicide hotlines have caught up. There was a point this summer where there was a 20 minute wait on some of the national hotlines. Think about that. You want to you want to take your life and somebody goes, please hold. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Wait that, a minute. I mean, that'll just push you over the edge. <laughs> Absolutely. But there's still some of the, the hotlines that deal with anxiety because what are we we're creating anxiety here that still have some wait times on them. And, you know, the anxiety hotlines, you know, it, to me, if, if I had to choose one, that's the one I would rather have some wait times because you can have a pre-recorded message about breathing and take, you know, centering yourself and all this kind of stuff that, you know, if you're wanting to kill yourself, it, it's, it's not gonna, well, the heck with breathing, you know, that's the whole <laughs> idea, you know? Yeah. And, um, uh, so, so if I had to choose the two, that's what I would choose. I don't like either one of them being that way. But we have to realize that, you know, a lot of people have died because of COVID, not because they got it, but because they were following government suggestions on how to get this slow down the spread. You don't understand people. Viruses find a way. That's why they are successful in such great numbers. And so many people get sick. Viruses find a way. And the government said from day one, none of the masks, none of the sequestering and isolation is going to stop the virus. It will slow it down. And that's all it's done. And now look, we have these great reports say, oh, the numbers are dropping most significant, 35% decrease. Why? Because the CDC said, oh, wait a minute, our testing methods are in error. A little too sensitive. And, yeah, little and too sensitive. <laughs> now, now, go back to know what you know. I work with virologists and, and, and infectious disease specialists, and they were telling me this in April, that the tests are too sensitive, and it's going to over-report, and people are going to be called this a asymptomatic when they really don't have it and never did. And... Now the CDC is saying, oh, well, that's right. So you can't confirm unless you have two different types of COVID tests. You can't just use one type. You have to use two different types so that, you know, it, rule, it rules out any false positives. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people in, in the healthcare industry, and I know some of them even CEOs of, of pharmaceutical companies and things like that. And they all told me, look, we have these things, but, you know, you know, this one over here has a 60 percent false positive rate, you know, and but they're and I'm like, why are they still buying? Well, they're the only tests that are really available right now. Oh, well, that's a great reason to use it. You know, <laughs> you're going to get 60 percent of the people aren't, you know, and we, we had this. We had com countries, third world countries who said we don't really know if we want to invest in these false tests. They in one of the countries in Africa, they actually took a kiwi fruit, swabbed it, and it came back positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know. mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. And we have destroyed our economy. We have driven paranoia. We have people fearful and striking out at people for not following masks when CDC says it just slows it down. And it also said a mask or six feet distance. They, they didn't say you had to do both, but our government politicians who are politicians, not scientists, are saying, well, you got to follow science. CDC says X and Y. Well, they, they only read the part they wanted to read. They didn't read the whole story. And so now people are being assaulted because they have uh, an anxiety disorder and can't wear a mask. And, you know, the CDC says even, you know, if you have certain circumstances, you may not have to wear a mask if you have a disorder or something along yeah. those lines. It's insane. It's insane. But so uh, so what about using uh, ketamine to treat uh, this covid induced depression? Do you think that could be effective? Well, I think I think ketamine can be effective. I, I think I think it's effective 
for about 80% of the population, and it's a relatively quick. I mean, you know, there are some people who take the ketamine, and it can take up to two months before it really kicks in. But then the majority of patients I see start reporting within 24 hours of significant change. And anxiety is one of those things that they have significant change in. And, and it's not like the anxiety is completely gone. In fact, as a mental health care professional, I don't want you to lose your anxiety. I don't want you to lose the fact that there are same things in this world that should be making you sad. You, you know, those are there for a reason to help you make better decisions in your life. You know, and, and if you're feeling anxiety, there may be actual reasons to feel anxious and you maybe need to look at the fundamentals of that situation. Should I continue to FOMO or should I wait a minute, this is kind of making me anxious here. Why is it making me anxious? And ketamine is a very good tool for helping you do that because it it gives you more control over your anxiety. It gives you more control over your depression. And for people with post-traumatic stress disorder, it gives them control over the symptoms of the trauma they've experienced, the reliving those, the fear, the trauma, the nightmares, the night terrors. And it gives them that ability to get on with their life. And, you know, in my office, it's funny. We talk about it all the time because it feels like it's a miracle when we see a patient we've worked with for a long time and nothing seems to work. And then we try the ketamine with them and literally they walk out of the office a different person than they walked in that morning. And it's like, wow, this is a miracle. And it's like, no, this is ketamine. It, it We do. We see these every week. It's not a, Amazing. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like the promise of shock treatments that uh, they zap you, zap your brain, and then you would forget about what was uh, bothering you. Here, <laughs> you don't forget about it. It just doesn't seem to be that big, a, as big a deal as it was before. Well, what we what we look at it is, you know, we, we have memories and those include the traumas. OK, now memory in in, in a human works much like the old libraries, you know, the, the brick and mortar libraries where you go in and, you know, you want a book and you go to the card catalog and you pull out the card catalog and you follow the Dewey Decimal System and, and you walk down and you pick up the book that you want. When you pull that book off that shelf, nobody else can read that book. You're the only one reading it. Now that's your long-term memory. You pull that, that trauma out. But while you're reading it this time, we give you a pen and you start writing notes in the margins. And, hey, I survived this. It's no longer going to control me. I'm no longer a threat to this trauma. It's not going to harm me anymore. And you start writing notes like that in the margins. Now, the next time you put that book up on the, on the, the shelf, the next person who comes in and reads it, they're going to be influenced by your notes in the margin. I mean, how many of us in college got used textbooks and we saw notes from previous right. readers? And it's like, oh, wait a minute. The professor said da, 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 and this is an easy way to remember this. Here's, you know, you, you would see all weird sorts of things. They even, you know, a, a very popular uh, movie series even used this as one of the premises for what saved the, the main character in the Harry Potter series were the notes written in the book. You know, yeah. and that because all of a sudden they took the text and they read it. But then what was in the margins tempered what they got in the text and made them see it in a different way and adjust how they use that information. And that's wow. exactly what we do with the ketamine is we go in there, you adjust all that, you write in the margins, and then you put that back on the bookshelf. And the next time you're going in and you start pulling that out, wow, it doesn't wow. have the impact it had before. That's and amazing. we do a series of that and we're actually, we're not getting rid of the memory. We're getting rid of how you perceive that you trauma. Process it, huh? Exactly. Now, the interesting thing is our memory can only be used by one part of our brain at one time. So you got long-term memory. Now you put it into short-term memory and then we put it into working memory where we actually can start manipulating that. And then we put it back in short term and then back into long term. It's only in each one of those spots at one time. Then we do all this and ketamine allows your body to reset these mechanisms and reset these memories. At the same time, ketamine has some of the anesthetic properties of amnesia. So it doesn't really you don't really necessarily remember the process that allowed you to write those notes in the margin. Wow. So. It now feels like it's part of the original trauma and you have control over it and your life has changed forever in a positive way. 
All right. Well, that sounds like really amazing. If people want to find out more about ketamine and the potential benefits, is there a place they can go to learn about it? Well, of course, I say go to my site, tripsitter.clinic, but you can also go to, you know, places like um, um, Yale Medical School. Go to Yale Protocol Ketamine, and you'll see hundreds, if not thousands, of research articles talking about the safety, the effectiveness, uh, the contraindications for ketamine. It's not for everybody that if there are certain situations going on, maybe you shouldn't be using ketamine, uh, you know, because just because it, it has these abilities doesn't mean it is for everybody. And that is why you need to be using this with doctor supervision, with somebody who knows what ketamine can and cannot do. I mean, there there are realities to it. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not going to make the trauma disappear. It's going to make how you perceive it different. Um, I use ketamine for pain management, okay? I, I broke my shoulder at a young age and uh, proceeded to continue to live an adventurous life and broke it a couple more times. I had chronic pain. And what happened with that is that homeostatic mechanism I was talking about earlier, the, the ketamine actually now that chronic pain signal that gets sent from my shoulder all the time, the ketamine has reset parts of my brain to say, you know, that's your new normal. Don't interpret it as pain anymore. So now I don't feel it as pain. But if I re-injure my shoulder, I do martial arts and uh, there's a few bumps and, and bruises here and there. And occasionally it ends up bruising my shoulder or bumping my shoulder. And my, my body goes, oops, there's a new pain there. You got to check that out because, you know, you don't want to really hurt yourself. So you sure. need to check on that. And mm -hmm. The ketamine allows that process to go through. It's not like they numb that part of my body or or you know put a nerve block so I'll never feel that. That's dangerous. That that's when people really get hurt. You know, you shoot those Novocaine shots into your knee so you can go back out on the playing field and you really blow out your knee now. You know, pain is sure. an important protective measure that you, your body uses for survival. And uh, you know, numbing that pain. It, when when it's sending you an important message is not a good idea. But when you have gone through a process, you've essentially healed as much as your body's going to heal it. And that's your new normal. You shouldn't have to live with chronic pain. And if your ketamine is administered correctly, it's amazing what it can do for you. Again, it's it's off label. So this is like an art. I mean, doctors are learning how to do this. Some of the research that's gone on for decades has been done in Russian in, in a total different language and the technology or the ability for people to interpret that that research um, is, is very difficult. And we started by, hey, let's just call some of the researchers and lo and behold, they could speak English. And so we had discourse. And on one of the organizations I'm with there, we actually got two of the Russian researchers on our advisory board. It's, you know, and so we start there and then we start, okay, Let's let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's start where they left off and let's keep moving forward. And it's 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 amazing some of the benefits. And, you know, again, it sounds like that miracle has happened. Well, there's biology behind it. There's research researchers at MIT, at Johns Hopkins, at Yale doing research, showing why these mechanisms work. And they're different. They work differently than, you know, SSNRIs. They work differently than SNRIs. Um, they work differently than dopaminergic med medications. They do work differently than opiates for pain. It's just another way to go after some of these things, these same mechanisms, you know, and, it, and it's been around since 1924. It's not a new drug. Right. The thing it's, it's very difficult for large pharmaceutical companies to make money off of it. The companies that have the money for the advertising, that have the money to blitz, you know, midday programming. So grandma finds out all about this new new medicine for depression or new medicine for treating your diabetes. And they the last thing they say, ask your doctor about it. Absolutely. I'm telling you, no, the doctors don't know about that medicine and the mm -hmm. drug companies know that. But if you're asking them about it, they end up having to go and research that. Sure. All right. So the place to go to to find out more, tripsitter.clinic. And uh, hey, you, you might just find that this is the miracle or the, the treatment that everything else you've tried has failed. And in these times, you might have been slightly or had a low-grade depression, 
But the lockdowns, loss of job, loss of business, that could easily set you off and put you into the clinical depression. And we all know there's not a lot of uh, great treatment options available. So this could be it. So in any event, uh, Dr. Huber, it's great to have you back on. And we'll talk to you again real soon. And any questions or comments, email me, kl at kerrylutz.com. We'll pass them on to the good doctor. And go sign up for our newsletter, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Sign up there. You won't want to miss it. Dr. Huber, we'll talk to you again real soon. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.